Hello, and welcome to our family Passover. This is the first night of Passover, traditionally when a Seder, a meal is celebrated with two emphases. First, as those who follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we remember the great exodus of Egypt and Israel. Secondly, we remember the great Passover of Yeshua, Jesus, as he gathered his disciples in Jerusalem for the last time when he was with us to reveal, to pull back the veil on the promise of the new covenant that was given way back to Abraham when he said, I will provide for myself a lamb. He provided Abraham a lamb on that mountain, and he's provided the world on another mountain, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. So tonight, with all of these different elements on the table, we'll be talking through and demonstrating and tasting this story as we go from place to place. So welcome, we're glad that you're here. Reading from the Torah, the book of Exodus, we read these words. In the first month, you're to eat bread made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day. For seven days, no yeast is to be found in your houses, nothing made with yeast. Wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. This is the feast that was celebrated by Jesus and his disciples. And so reading from the gospels, the book of Luke, we read these words. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The Lord's Supper finds its origin and its fullness in the Passover. And a Passover without the Lord's Supper is a cup that is only half full. Tonight, we will taste and demonstrate the full cup of the Passover of Moses, the Passover of Yeshua Jesus, which gives us entrance into the kingdom of God by the table of his covenant. So let's officially open our celebration by lighting the festival candles. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu, B'Mitzvotav, V'Tzivanu, Lehalekner Shel Pesach. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have sanctified us with your word and commanded us to remember the Passover. And now we wash our hands. From Exodus chapter 30, we read, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants for the generations to come. And in the Gospel of John, we read this. Yeshua humbled himself at his last Passover Seder by wrapping a towel around his waist and washing the feet of his disciples. In like manner, let us now serve one another in the washing of our hands. So as the servant of this Passover, I will carry the bowl and serve my family in the washing of our hands and preparing for the rest of the meal. This was to be done by a servant in the home, usually a slave. And this was the only part that was to be purchased and done by the servant. But because Yeshua was the servant of all, 
he went even further. He wrapped the towel around his waist and he knelt at the feet of his disciples and he washed their feet. Good job. Reading again from the book of Exodus, we find that this is to be an everlasting ordinance. Lador Vador, from generation to generation. And as you see, we have three generations here at our table. Shiloh, the man of peace, has begun eating a little sooner than normal, but we make exceptions for anyone under one year of age. You're welcome. <laughs> On our table, we have several <laughs> Seder plates. Again, Seder is order. So there's an, there's an order to all of this. And the order tells the story of progression, of the deliverance, the salvation of every home, as in the book of Exodus, and the deliverance uh, out of slavery. So on our Seder plates, we have the different elements that are gonna help us tell the story tonight. There's a green leafy vegetable that we'll get to enjoy in just a few minutes. That reminds us that this feast happens in the first month of the year, the month of Nisan. We have this lovely mixture of apples and honey and nuts and cinnamon. And this brown color reminds us that we used to be slaves and we made bricks for Pharaoh, which was not a really good job. He didn't pay us very well. So we have more green leafy vegetables that are to be dipped in salt water. We have, this is not my favorite. Um, it's called bitter herbs or maror. I like the Hebrew word because it really tells you that it, yeah. It'll make your breath roar for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is horseradish, and it reminds us of the bitterness of slavery. We also have the shank bone of a very small lamb, and this reminds us that it took a lamb, the sacrifice of a lamb with the blood on the doorposts and the lentils. And when the angel of the Lord saw that blood, he passed over our home and the curse was broken. We believe that at this Passover, in this critical time and this year, that the curse that has been ravaging the earth is broken at this Passover. Let's believe together for the deliverance of the nations, the salvation of every home, that a lamb has been provided for every home. At every Passover, there are four cups and the four cups represent the four different promises that God made in Exodus 6. And now we're gonna read those together. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Each of the four cups has a very unique name and it all comes from that scripture. Cup one is called the cup of sanctification where it says, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Cup two is the cup of plagues. I will rescue you from their bondage. Cup three is the cup of redemption. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And the last cup, the fourth cup, is called the cup of praise. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. And now we're gonna partake of the first cup, the cup of sanctification, which comes from the scripture, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So let's all take our cups and let's say the blessing together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Let's all take. Amen. 
Although any green leafy vegetable can be used here, parsley is often used to signify spring, new life, and the time of year for the Passover feast. It is dipped in salt water to represent our many tears as we remember the hopelessness of a life of slavery. In Egypt, there was great suffering and the children of Israel shed many tears. Let's all read this together. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. Exodus 3, 7. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, b'rei pri ha'adama. Now let's take the parsley, dip it into the salt water, and partake together. Notice the saltiness and remember the tears of the broken heart. Psalm 56, eight says, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. Revelation 7, 17 says, and God will wipe every tear from their eye. Why do we do this? The answer really is found for us again in the book of Exodus chapter 13 and verse 14 says this, in the days to come when your son asks you, what does this mean? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And now as a part of our story, it's called the Magid in the Hebrew, which means story. In ancient times, the Magid was not just a story, but also a storyteller. A, a man who knew these stories by heart, a professional storyteller would go from town to town and he would entertain the people with stories from the Bible. And so tonight, I get the opportunity to be the Magid and tell the story of the Passover. I'll start my story at the beginning as this is a very good place to start. Our father Jacob had 12 sons, but the one who was most special to him was Joseph. On all other nights, we eat bread or matzah. On this night, why do we eat only matzah? That's a great question, Caleb, and I have just the answer for you. On all other nights, we eat bread with yeast. But on Passover, we eat only matzah. This is to remind us of the quick departure from Egypt and how there was no time to allow bread to rise. Now let's all read together. This is the bread of affliction. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are in need come and share the Passover meal. And now something very wonderful and mysterious happens. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the Seder. There is matzah on the table. You can see it everywhere. And yet there is a special unity of three matzah loaves that have been set aside and they're kept in this special pouch called a matzatash. Three loaves are here. But at this point in the Seder, and this happens on every Seder table around the world tonight, the middle sheet is removed. There's three, but the middle one is the one that's removed. It's removed from the other two. And then it's broken. And part of it will remain on the table to be used during the rest of our meal. But this piece has a special place. We then take a white linen cloth and we wrap it. We might even say it's hidden. It's buried. And we will take this and then hide it somewhere in the house. It needs to come back at the end of the meal. It has a new name. It's called Afikomen, which means I will come again. The mysteries that are here are hidden from some eyes, but they're hidden in plain view for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear 
Notice the matzah. It's pierced, it's striped, and it's bruised. And it reminds us of a prophecy from the great prophet Isaiah in chapter 53, when he reminds us that there was one coming who would be pierced for our transgressions. He would be bruised and striped for our healing and for our iniquities. With his stripes, we would be healed. And so this bread, the special bread, no leaven, no yeast, it's not puffed up. In the scriptures, that represents the sin and pride. And so our Messiah was without sin. So if now you will all take a piece of the matzah and share it amongst yourselves. Yeshua said in the Gospel of John, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. A hard saying, but in this Seder meal, we begin to understand what he was saying. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread out of the land. Lord, we give you thanks for the special bread and for the mystery revealed in it. In Yeshua's name, amen. On all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables. On this night, why do we eat only bitter herbs? This is actually my favorite question of all of them. Not everybody's, but it is mine, personally. <laughs> <laughs> on all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables. But on this night, we eat only bitter herbs to remind us of how terrible life was as slaves. And so while some regret it, I enjoy it. And let's all read together. The Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly they made their lives with bitter and hard labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. So now let's take our matzah and we're gonna dip it into this wonderful bitter herbs. Mm, hopefully. And now we're gonna say a blessing for this wonderful topping on our matzah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Vitivanu al Ahilat Mahor. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who commands us to eat bitter herbs. Now let's all partake and enjoy this. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> and now you're probably tasting the bitterness of slavery. And even the rabbis say that if you don't really shed a tear, then it wasn't strong enough. But I can tell you what we've had here is strong. On all other nights, we do not dip our vegetables even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? That's a great question there, young man. <laughs> On all other nights, we do not dip our vegetables, but tonight we dip them twice. We already dipped the parsley in the salt water, and now we dip into the mixture chorosin. This mixture, or chorosit, symbolizes the mud and bricks that were used to build cities for Pharaoh. Now let's all partake of the chorosit. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about. On all other nights, we eat our meals sitting or reclining. On this night, why do we eat only reclining? So to answer your last question, Exodus 6.6 6 says, I will rescue you from being slaves. On all other nights, we are sitting up, but on this night, we recline or relax at the table. The first Passover was eaten in haste while we were still slaves, but tonight we recline and relax as free people. Now let's all read. This, this is how, how you are, are to eat it. it with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, 
and your staff in your hand. Eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Exodus 12, 11. The second cup of our celebration is called the Cup of Judgment. Quoting again from the book of Exodus chapter 1, the Lord says, And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Egypt was a very powerful nation. They were the strongest and biggest. They were the wealthiest. And in ancient times, it was believed that the biggest and strongest nation was the one who served the true gods. In this second cup, God himself is demonstrating to all of Egypt, all of Israel, and every nation that there is no other God but him. And so these 10 plagues that came upon Egypt were not so much plagues against the people, but they were a war of the gods and the God of all gods conquered every one of them. A full cup is considered to be a joyful thing. But because we also remember the pain and suffering of the Egyptians as they served false gods, during the second cup, we'll not partake of it, but we'll actually diminish our cup one drop at a time as we remember each of the gods that were overcome by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I will speak each one in Hebrew, and you will speak them in English, and each time dip your finger and place the drop on your plate. Ready? Dom. Blood. Tzfardea. Frogs. Frogs. Kinim. Lice. Arov. Nats. Mm. Dever. Cow disease. Shechin. Oil. Oil. Barad. Hail. Hail. Arbe. Locust. Choshech. Dark, dark, dark. Makat Becharot. Death, death, and firstborn. Each plague was directed specifically at a god of Egypt. And with that, the demonstration of the power of the one true God was seen by every man, woman, and beast felt the power of the real God of the universe. There are many things represented tonight at our table, but there are three in particular that I want to highlight. It's the lamb, the matzah, and the bitter herbs. Rabbi Hillel is a famous rabbi in history who is the grandfather of Rabbi Gamiel, teacher of the Apostle Paul, as mentioned in Acts 22, verse 3. It was Rabbi Hillel who taught that the lamb, the matzah, and the bitter herbs must be mentioned to teach the meaning of Passover. We have already discussed the matzah and the bitter herbs, but now let's discuss the lamb. The shank bone, which we have on our Seder plate, reminds us that the lamb was sacrificed and that the blood on our doors that marked us as a family of God. It also reminds us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness for sins. Without the blood of the lamb of God and his covenant with us, we are lost without hope in the world. So let us all read together. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you must take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. Exodus 12, 5, through seven. And now with that, it's time to eat. There is an ancient saying that is known very well in all of Israel that really describes all of the feasts and festivals. It goes like this. They tried to kill us. God saved us. Let's eat.
Yes. <laughs> you pass the matzo, please. I found it. Oh, wonderful. Yay. Good job. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa. Whoa. Piece of silver. That's cool. <laughs> it's traditional that this special bread, once it's found, would be redeemed or purchased with pieces of silver. It reminds us that the bread of heaven, Yeshua, our Messiah, was purchased by pieces of silver by Judas, the one who betrayed him. And now we see in the Gospels, it says, after dinner, Yeshua, Jesus, took the bread. Well, what bread did he take? There's, there's bread all over the table. It's here, it's here, it's here. We've been using it during our meal. This is the bread that he took. He took the bread. This, remember, is the one of the three, the middle one that was removed, broken, hidden away, buried, and now purchased again at the end of the meal with pieces of silver. This bread that was pierced bruised, striped, that resembles the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 53. And this bread, Yeshua said, this bread is my body, which is given for you. I was removed, I'm bruised, striped, and pierced, buried, hidden away, but I will return. This bread, he said, is my body. And so take it and eat it, all of you. This is what we call the Lord's Supper. It's hidden in this special part of the Seder. But again, it's hidden in plain sight. With this, he demonstrated and he pushed back the veil of the new covenant, which was promised through the prophet Jeremiah. He said, I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, God speaking again, he says, by reason of the covenant of blood with you, this is a covenant in the body of and in just a moment, in the blood of our King, what is called the Last Supper, which is a part of a Seder. Without the Seder, the Last Supper has no foundation. But without the Last Supper, a Seder has no hope for mankind. And he lifted up the bread and he said, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You bring forth bread from the land. Father, we give you thanks. This bread, this body, which was given for us, we receive your covenant in the name of Yeshua. Receive his body. And now we come to the third cup, the cup of redemption, where it says in Exodus 6, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. From Matthew 26, verse 27. And now if we can all uh, raise our cups and pray this prayer that Yeshua prayed at the Last Supper during Passover in Hebrew.
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit from the vine. Yeshua, we thank you for your blood that was poured out for us, removed all of our sin. And we thank you for that by your stripes, we are healed. And so we thank you for your sacrifice that you poured out for us. In Yeshua's name, amen. Now let's all read together. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Psalm 116, 13. At every Seder, there is a spot for Elijah with a full cup and empty seat waiting for anticipation of his appearance. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 5. Let's all read together. Jesus said, and you are willing to accept it. He, John the Baptist, is the Elijah who was come to come. Matthew 11, 14. And now for the fourth cup, the cup of praise. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Exodus 6, verse 7. And now from Luke 22, 18. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So we lift up the fourth cup in praise to God for his completed work of redemption when the yoke of slavery was broken. The people of the great king were set free to be the family of God. This is also the cup which Jesus will drink anew with us when he returns to judge the nations and establish his throne in Jerusalem and to celebrate the marriage of the Supper of Lamb. Revelation 16, 6 through 9. And now let's say this prayer together in Hebrew. Baruch etah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit from the vine. That's all I'll take. Now let's declare this psalm of thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, to him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever who by his understanding made the heavens, who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights, the sun to govern the day, the moon and the stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. So Dainu is a 1,000 year old Hebrew song, meaning it would have been enough for us. We show our gratitude for each of the many ways God has protected and saved the Jewish people as they journeyed from slavery to freedom. We say that anything the Lord does is sufficient as He is the one who takes great care of us, His people. Had God brought us out of Egypt and not divided the sea for us, it, it would have been, been enough, enough for us. us. Dainu, had God kept us for 40 years in the desert and not fed us with manna, it, it would, would have, have been, been enough, enough for us. us. Dainu. Had God divided the sea and not permitted us to cross onto dry land, it, it would have been, been enough, enough for us. Dainu. Had God fed us with manna and not given us the Sabbath, it, it would have been, been enough, enough for us. Dainu. Now let's sing. Okay. Right? Die, 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 Right. <laughs> Pretty good. In Numbers chapter 6, the Lord gives a commandment, really, for a blessing. He said, when you speak to my people, say these words, and when you do, I will place my name upon them, and I will bless them. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you his peace. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha, Ya'er Adonai panavelecha v'yichonecha, Isa Adonai panavelecha v'yasem lecha shalom. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach, Sar Shalom, in the name of Jesus, our Messiah, the Prince of all peace.